When I was little, I wanted what many Filipino children all over the country wanted. I wanted to be blonde, blue-eyed, and white. I thought I just wish hard enough I'd wake up on Christmas morning with snow outside my window and freckles across my face. More than four centuries under Western domination can do that to you. I have 16 cousins. In a couple of years, there will just be five of us left in the Philippines. The others will have gone in search for greener pastures. It's not an anomaly, it's a trend. The Filipino diaspora. Today, 8 million Filipinos are scattered around the world. There are those who disapprove of Filipinos who choose to live. I used to. Maybe this is a natural reaction of someone who was left behind, smiling for family pictures that get emptier with each succeeding year. Desertion, I call it. My country is a land that has perpetually fought for the freedom to be itself. Our heroes offer their lives in a struggle against Spanish, the Japanese, the Americans. To pack up and deny that identity is tantamount to speaking on the sacrifice. Or is it? I don't think so. Not any True. There is no denying this phenomenon, aided by the fact that what was once the other side of the world is now a 12-hour plane right away. But this is a borderless world where no individual can claim to be purely from where he is now. My mother is of Chinese descent, my father is a quarter Spanish, and I call myself a pure Filipino, a hybrid of sorts resulting from a combination of cultures. Each square mile anywhere in the world is made up of people of different ethnicities with national identities and individual personalities. Because of this, each square mile is already a microcosm of the world. And as much as this blessed spot that is England's world, so is my neighborhood back home. Seen this way, the Filipino diaspora, or any sort of dispersal of population, is not as ominous as so many claims. It must be understood. I come from a third world country, one that is still trying mightily to get back on its feet after many years of dictatorship. But we shall make it, given more time. Especially now when we have thousands of eager young minds who graduate from college every year. They have skills. They need jobs. We cannot absorb them all. A borderless world presents a bigger opportunity. Yet, one that is not so much abandonment, but an extension of identity. Even as we take, we give back. We are the 40,000 skilled nurses who support the United Kingdom's National Health Service. We are a quarter of a million seafarers manning most of the world's commercial ships. We are your software engineers in Ireland, your construction workers in the Middle East, your doctors and caregivers in North America, and your musical artists in London's West End. Nationalism isn't bound by time or place. People from other nations may great of many other nations, yet still remain essential who they are. British society is itself an example of a multicultural nation, a melting pot of races, religions, arts and cultures. We are indeed in a borderless world. Leaving sometimes isn't a matter of choice. It's coming back that is. The hobbits of the Shire traveled all over Middle Earth, but they choose to come home, feature in every sense of the word. We call people like these about how to find their dreams. Those who follow their dreams yet choose to return and share their mature talents and good fortune. In a few years, I may take advantage of whatever opportunities that may come, but I will come home.
Sydney, but somehow I feel like 